Hello, in this video I'm going to cover how to make a tiling material with repeating shapes. So I use Substance Designer a lot and I love Substance Designer. Um, however, it's got one weakness where if you want to take a shape and repeat it everywhere, since it's height map based, um, you typically have a problem with the shapes like blending into each other or, you know, overlapping and, you know, that's not realistic so you'll have you know in this example with spheres just spheres being you know mashed into each other so i was trying to figure out a way how to get around that um with you know scattered objects and things so this seems to be a pretty good method that i've used a few times i've used it on like tree leaves and piles of you know stuff coins um and it's yeah generally a good way to go so it's a little bit crazy you got all this um However, yeah, it works really well. So this is the texture that I've made and I've just made a normal map of this. I'm not going to cover how to do the normal map from something like this in this video, but I will be recording a video after this one, which covers uh, how to generate a normal map properly from this. Uh, but yeah, this is the, this is the texture and it tiles really well. So you can take this information and, you know, do whatever you want with it. You could go straight to Fuse or take it to Substance Designer or something and generate your other maps like ambient occlusion, height, roughness and all that. So a lot you can do with this. So let's jump in on how to make this uh, tiling setup. So brand new scene, I'm going to pull in a plane and then I'm going to pull in a queue, which is going to be our reference uh, object that we're going to scatter everywhere. And we're going to be using um geometry nodes for this so i'm going to turn this cube into a sphere with my magic wand um bevel so i'm going to put a bevel on it make sure clamp overlap is on which it should be by default and just turn the amount all the way up and then just scroll the segments up and we can just change the resolution of this at any time if i uh, hit shade smooth on this we can see we're getting shading problems because of the overlapping vertices but we can just use the weld modifier afterwards to get rid of that so yeah we can change the resolution of that anytime works really well so on this plane we're going to stick on geometry nodes and then i'm going to go to my geometry nodes tab up here that i've made for myself um and i'm also going to pin this so that if i click on something this does not change if i have it off then it changes all the time i'm only going to be making this one graph so first thing we want to do is we want to distribute a bunch of points. So point distribute, and this will go straight from our input. And the last thing we want to do is instance um, our reference object. So I'm just going to hit the eyedropper and click the cube. Ha <laughs> ha, not really. Um, I'm going to move these over here to give us some space to work. All right. Now I'm going to add, um, we want to just modify the scale a bit, randomize the scale. So attribute randomize right after point distribute. And we want to modify the scale. Um, yep, float, replace, that's all good. So let's, oh, I want to change the point distribute to be Poisson disk as well. I like this because especially with overlapping stuff it's nice to have some space in between where each uh, thing is spawned so um let's increase the density a bunch and let's just see the range of scale that we get okay our minimum let's bump this up to i don't know 0.8 or something and then our max we could do 0.2 sure we can modify that later so let's see let's turn the density up some more Maybe turn the distance up a bit. There we go. Got some Voronoir pattern going on here. All right. So this is good enough for now. Um, one problem we're having already is that, you know, everything, you know, is obviously overlapping. So we need to offset the Z. And that's why I had this massive pile of things. So one method I like to do. So we'll just take the, oops, not random float. Although that's helpful for certain things attribute randomize and we want to randomize the position but we don't want to we want to turn this into a vector there we go xyz coordinates 
We also don't want to do replace and create, we want to add to those. All right, and a method I like to use for stuff like this is first we can, you know, create three values, one for X, one for Y, one for Z. We can rename those by hitting F2, X, Y, F2 again, Z or Z, and then combine X, Y, Z. And we will pull these into here, X, Y, Z, duplicate this, X, Y, Z. And now, um, so this is going to act for our, our minimum and maximum. This isn't required. This is just sort of a helpful tip if you find that you're tweaking the values a lot. Um, so I'm going to pull in a math node to make these negative, the, the minimum negative, and we'll leave the math node. We're going to multiply by negative one to make it a negative. So um, there we go. I'm going to collapse that. Collapse, is that the right one? Uh, let's see. There we go. One, two, and three. So we have all these multiplied by a negative number. And plug that one in the minimum, negative in the minimum, and the positive in the maximum. Okay, so I don't want to modify the X or the Y. I just want to modify the Z. So if we take this, this is what we start with and just start to crank it up. And if we go down to the orthographic view, we can start to see how that's being affected there. So right now, I mean, that's good enough. If I keep going, that works. I now you're taking a top down orthographic view. So if it's just insane like this, it's fine. But if you don't like it, we can, you know, modify some things. So let's pull this down a bit. There we go. You can start to see that is overlapping there. Um, but I'm actually going to make these a bit smaller. So I'm going to take this and scale it down. And let's um, let's bump up the density a bit. So this, this is going to take some, you know, fiddling. So fiddle at your own uh, time, I guess. I'm going to turn down the distance a bit too. So everything was very spread out, which is fine. We just have to crank things up and yeah, this is just a back and forth between these two things. Uh, and you just want to keep doing it until you don't have any gaps anymore. That seems good enough. And there's that little one, but whatever, let it slide. All right, that's good. So now what? Now we can, oops. And now we can um, take this and put a camera up there. So I'm adding a camera and we want to, first off, we want to change the resolution of this camera. If I hit zero, numpad zero, we can see the aspect ratio and everything. We want to change the resolution to be 1024 by 1024. And that should fix that to be square. If we go into our camera um, properties, we want to change the type from perspective to orthographic. There we go. Um, also, yeah, we are seeing this clipping. So we'll want to move this up in Z like so and hit numpad zero. Perfect. So now we can see it's just a bit too big. Orthographic scale is where we can change that. So let's change this to, if we go down to four, we remove a square. So it's like one, two on the side. And then going down to two, we fix that. Cool. So when we take the picture of this, I'm going to use this normal map, uh, normal mat cap, um, it, just because it's easy to see if it's tiling or not with all the different colors. So cool. Um, one thing we can use is um, if you go up to view and do viewport render image, you can just take a straight picture of this from what the viewport sees. Um, however, we're seeing that we are getting, you know, outlines, and we're getting the grid. So we we'll want to turn those off. So turn off overlays. And then on the viewport shading, we want to go and take off cavity. You can see that affects things and turn off outline as well. And then if we look closely, yep, things look good. So I've bound this 
to insert because I use this a lot just taking like renders and stuff for work um, but yeah I like having that on insert but anyway so click that uh, viewport render image and now I'm gonna save it and now that it's saved I'm going to um, pull up a plane so turn on overlays again and let's bring mesh plane and we're just going to see how this texture works out so we want to go into material preview make a new material we'll call this tiling texture and in the base color i'm going to add in an image texture and open our image So now that the image is opened, we can see that things are looking pretty good. Um, going into UV editing mode, um, if we modify these UVs, so we select everything here, and then we scale, we can see that this tiling is not going to work. So to fix that, we need to add more um, of these. So this seems to be the best method I've found but we just want to create duplicates on all sides of this so i'm just going to select this and hit alt d and hit x and move over i'm holding down control and i think by default increment snap is on but you can change that here um i have vertex on if you hold down shift you can actually select multiple um but yeah i'm just going to keep the increment on for that and hold down control to turn that on so one last thing, I want to check in the item and just make sure that this is a straight number and not like a point value, a floating point value. So, all right, Alt D and X, hold the control, and I'm looking at the top to see if it's at two, and yes, it is. Now select all these again, Alt D, Y, holding, holding down control, there we go, Alt D, Y, and there we go. So now, the nice thing about this is if you start with this, you can actually see um how it's going to tile before you you know hit render so if i go to this mac cap again you can see that this is you know, it's pretty good i'm seeing like this this pattern here repeated again so if i uh let's see if i click this and go back into geometry nodes uh, let's see there we go um and turn off that so we can just turn off overlay so we can just see this if we change the seed value we can you know it just randomizes it so i'm just going to pick something that i like this seems to be pretty good um yeah you just you just want to pattern that you know you, you don't have these like repeated uh, patterns um everywhere so just trying to get something that seems a bit more evenly spread i think one was actually a pretty good one yeah, that's good enough. So that's going to tile pretty well. Um, and yeah, you can just keep going and modifying things just slightly. You can also change these values a little bit too to break things up. Um, yeah. Anyway, so you have some tools at your disposal. Um, this is good enough for now though. So I'm going to hit numpad zero and I'm going to um, hit insert, but over here, view viewport render image. And now I'm going to save this again. I'm just going to save over that. Okay, saved. And uh, now I'm going to go back into my material preview and under UV editing. I'm just going to see this. So, one of the most satisfying things I like do see is uh, when it updates just seeing all the tiling stuff go away so with my mouse over here I'm gonna hit alt R to reload or you can go up to image and reload there so alt R and then watch here boom oh what the completely different picture <laughs> oh well <laughs> I wonder why that was but anyway now it's not tiling so yay Oh, it's because we changed the seed. That's right. So if we'd left it, then we would have seen just the edges. But anyway, yeah, and we can see here, this is getting cut off. If this was a big deal, then we could, 
you know, modify the Z some more. Uh, pretty easy to do. Where was that? Um, oh, right here. So I just take the Z and pick it up some more. Seventy-five. Yeah, this this value doesn't really matter. Like you've seen the same thing from the top down. So as long as your camera has the right clipping distance, it will be fine. So anyway, yeah, we could. Oh yeah, see, I'm gonna have to pick that up. Mm, camera, pick that up. Something like that. This is ridiculous. I love it. Numpad zero, there we are. So I can just take that off, insert, and yeah, save again. And now if we look at this, and just hit Alt-R to reload, there we go, that fixed that. Cool. So that's all there is to it. Um, yeah, you can use this for all kinds of things. Like I've said, I've used it for like coins and leaves on a, on a tree, like the base mesh of a tree. Um, you scatter in all kinds of objects. Yes, it's a really good method. Uh, in another video, I'll show how to take this and use it as an actual normal map. Right now, this will not work and we'll talk about that, or why that is, um, and compare some results um, using viewport render image to get uh, normal maps and stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. I do these mostly for me to help me sync things in and for me to reference back. But if anyone else can enjoy these and get something from it, then that's helpful too. So thanks. Leave a comment, subscribe, all that jazz, and see you in another video. Bye.